NFTs in Gambling. Everybody, welcome to uh, NFTs in Gambling. Uh, maybe a little bit different this time because we have such a diverse panel up here. We have a lawyer, an asset manager, and an artist and record label owner. So we might uh, switch things up a little bit to accommodate our panel, but the focus will still be on NFTs, of course. So first, if everybody wants to introduce themselves, uh, we can get the panel started. Sure. Uh, my name is Greg McMullen. I am a lawyer with Segev LLP, focused uh, almost entirely on blockchain law. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Salil Castillo, uh, I'm the director of Ethereum Token, also the CEO of DeFi Entertainment, music label that's focused on uh, financing uh, music careers with uh, cryptocurrencies. Hello everyone, my name is Zachary Friedman, uh, I'm the co-founder and COO of GDA Capital and our sister company Secure Digital Markets. Uh, we really focus on the entire blockchain ecosystem, we've been around for uh, just about six years now, uh, supporting digital asset projects with advisory. Uh, we support with investments. We have an asset management arm. And under our brokerage, we support uh, institutions, businesses, gaming clients for uh, digital asset liquidity and trading needs and really all their financial service requirements. Great. And I will be the moderator. I'm Jason Paprava, the founder and CEO of Moonbet, which is a community-owned cryptocurrency, sportsbook, casino, and esports betting platform uh, where anybody who holds our EMBA token can become an owner of the platform. Um, so getting into this, uh, we'll start off with a little bit of NFT and gambling. Uh, obviously, the NFT has taken the world of crypto by storm, and a lot of ways that uh, it can be utilized is in gambling as cryptocurrency moves into the world of iGaming. So uh, if everybody wants to just take a moment to say how they feel that NFTs are going to have a positive impact going forward on the world of iGaming and gambling from either an operator or player perspective. Um, but I think w there, it's already being used. I mean, I think it's a, it's a necessity. Uh, right now, I know about projects that are actually selling NFTs. And uh, based on the NFTs that you have, you, you'll actually get a percentage of the, the money you know, that the casino generates. So I think that that's actually something that, that's needed uh, in the evolution of, of this ecosystem of the blockchain. Yeah, I really think it can be broken down into three major categories. First and foremost, I think that uh, VIP status and rewards, um, using your NFTs to basically award your participants and show transparency uh, for being active in your gaming businesses and your casinos. Um, I think with lottery systems, the second concept would really be transparency. Uh, you can see the odds of the games online directly on the blockchain. Um, you can also see really uh, what, what's happening and have full transparency using the technology. And third, I think the actual on-ramp and off-ramp and the payment methods, uh, we all know the difficulties in trying to game using fiat currencies, bank rails, uh, and traditional currency. So using an alternative form of currency through NFTs or crypto. Um, and similarly, to as uh, even Moonbet does, which, which you mentioned, Jason, um, you know, being able to pay out distributions, uh, award users that can participate. There's a lot of unique and novel models that are going to continue to kind of um, innovate and that we'll see in the gaming space. Uh, the, the last thing I'll touch on, which is really interting, is just fully metaverse-enabled uh, casinos. So uh, one of my subsidiaries that I helped co-found is called Metaverse Group. And Metaverse Group uh, is today one of the largest holders of metaverse land, primarily in Decentraland, but across eight different metaverses. And really, we're focused on three main categories, uh, fashion, uh, and gaming being two of the largest ones, and entertainment and music being the third. But we're seeing a ton of participants trying to launch and start their own uh, you know, casinos, slot machines, games, resorts, uh, that all occur in the metaverse, where you can access them through membership, through an NFT, and, and really that is kind of like an access gateway. Um, it's to enable and support the blockchain technology, uh, which underlies you know, an entire gaming ecosystem, uh, presents opportunities for community, uh, for collaboration, uh, and the works. Um, so I guess to start on the good news, uh, I totally agree that uh, it, there's a lot of opportunity for NFTs to improve trust and transparency in the industry. Um, I think uh, having, having kind of the on-chain records of that stuff is definitely going to play a positive role. Um, 
but as the lawyer, it's my kind of responsibility to rain on every single parade and make everyone miserable. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we've got a lot of clients coming with uh, ideas that are either uh, own an NFT to take part in a uh, lottery, uh, which is a lottery and is probably either Ill illegal or totally regulated, um, and people don't seem to want that to be the case, uh, or cases where it's... Uh, giving uh, like a cut of uh, a specific game or a piece of the, the house's cut or uh, increasing odds. And in those cases, it could be an investment contract which would bring it under securities law. So there's kind of this narrow window of things that you can do outside of regulatory scrutiny. Um, and I think uh, until, until the rules are more defined, it's kind of dangerous to play in those areas. Uh, one question touching on that because it's very interesting and actually one thing that we're doing at Moonbet is we have designed an NFT uh, based lottery where the tickets are in fact NFTs so you have rightful ownership of it and there's a contract that can prove um, that basically provably fair lottery to make sure that everything is correct and on the up and up. Um, so in the case of regula regulation, obvi obviously regulation is in place to protect players and to make sure that everything is fair. That's why we have regulatory bodies, whether it's casinos, sports books, everything of that nature. Um, so if uh, NFTs are doing that themselves through the smart contract and are audited and are provably fair and can be proven to pr protect the players, um, how does that fit into any regulatory issues or how does that sort of complement any regulatory issues that arise? I think in the long run that will give regulators a bit more confidence that uh, they are able to move and, and allow these things. Uh, but I think it's, it's an important rule of thumb just to remember that just because something is done using crypto or NFTs doesn't mean that you can just do it. So if, if something would be a lottery if you did it with paper or... Uh, with just selling tickets, uh, it's probably going to be a lottery with NFTs too. Perfect, uh, all right, so let's go over to Zach. Um, obviously you were mentioning that you have a lot of um, background in working with NFT based companies as far as assets and sort of funding it. How do you see, uh, touching on what you spoke about earlier, as far as NFTs being able to either be funding um, crypto casinos and sportsbook products or adding liquidity or providing holders with any sort of benefits um, for being basically the house? Right. So, um, you know, I, I won't comment on the legal and regulatory environment. Obviously, there's a lot of nuances involved. And I think that, um, you know, oftentimes we lead with with ideas and innovation and um, the, the regulation is, is slower to keep up. There's obviously enough of a framework now. Um, the, the use cases you mentioned with respect to being securities for payouts and other and, and different jurisdictions where you can operate are, are apparent. Uh, but I think that the novel use cases are going to continue to emerge. Some of the ideas I touched on are just kind of um, anticipatory of where I think the NFT and blockchain technology can improve on gaming. Um, there's obviously a lot of nuances to this and the first movers in any novel uh, push in industry, um, you know, do face that regulatory risk, but they are, um, you know, present to be able to capitalize on that upside. So uh, this is challenges that entrepreneurs are facing elsewhere. Um, you know, when I look around the industry, I, I love to see that innovation that's going to lead to adoption. The gaming sector itself is massive um, and is going to really allow that adoption to occur in a mainstream capacity. So, you know, from, from my lens and perspective, I'm still taking a wait and see approach in highly regulated markets like gaming uh, from an investment perspective. And it's why I have primarily focused on uh, fashion, which is a lot more tangible and digestible. Uh, when it comes to the NFT and metaverse applications and, you know, even trying to uh, pave the way with real world assets. So take traditional art and traditional assets, cars, diamonds, etc., and create an NFT, uh, leverage that to be able to sell and exhibit that in marketplaces, um, transfer ownership. But, you know, we're, we're seeing companies across the entire spectrum from IP protection all the way up to, uh, again, the rewards and loyalty to casinos and operators themselves start to kind of uh, take these, um, you know, use cases and build businesses around them. Uh, and hopefully the funding helps get them to the point where they can figure out the solution. Perfect, perfect. 
and all very good points. And Castillo, you had a very good point earlier when we asked uh, what could be the potential uses for NFTs uh, in gambling and iGaming. And one of the things that you had uh, mentioned is the fact that they can be used as VIP um, keys or some sort of incentive for players to play in a, a specific sports book or casino, just as a real life sports book or casino would give them, whether it's you know a free hotel room or something like that. Now that that's all moving to NFTs, so do you want to maybe elaborate on how you feel that NFTs um, are a great way for operators, casino owners, sports books to actually help bring players in? Yeah, no, not only for for iGaming and, and uh, casinos, but also for music and, and everything else. Uh, NFTs, the way that they work and the way that, that you actually get people involved is that you actually work with that community. Uh, you need to work with your community, you need to get with your community, you need to talk to your community, inform your community. And when when you're actually leveraging something as an NFT and, and you're giving them something in exchange, that, that gets them motivated to actually get into your, your program, get into your community, actually verify. That's why we had, at Healer Marketplace, we, we were looking for for problems with NFTs and we found that, as we were talking earlier, uh, there's the, the multimedia NFTs, anything that's music uh, NFTs or, or video NFTs, uh, they're, if outside the Web 3 and Web 2, they get paid royalties. Artists get paid royalties for any time that those videos get watched, any time that that, that music gets played. Uh, and in Web3, that doesn't happen. So that's why we're creating a marketplace in which they'll actually get paid a royalty anytime that that NFT gets played. Great, great. And good points on Web3. Obviously, a lot of um, the talk here this week is transitioning to Web3, the future of blockchain and cryptocurrency, and the future of the internet. Uh, also, some would say the future of iGaming. Uh, Greg, probably the best person to ask about this. As a lot of companies start to look or start to consider a move to Web3 in the iGaming space, which would entail things like NFTs and MetaMask integrations, how do you feel that that plays into um, their ability to do so while also protecting the players, also protecting things like lost funds or you know, potential scams, social engineering scams? Um, do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Um, I, I think that is uh, it, it's clearly a, a huge problem uh, that really we need a lot of uh, user experience effort on um, and I, I think if I was setting up a web3 enterprise I would want to be really careful in my legal terms to make sure that uh, users understood those risks and to make sure that uh, they understand that uh, my company wouldn't be responsible for those risks um, we haven't seen a ton of litigation over those things yet in Canada, a bit more in the States, but uh, often there's not much money left if there's been a, a huge attack that way. Um, but we've definitely seen users losing everything, and I think uh, it's probably not great reputationally or legally. Um, so it's, it's certainly something I hope that we see the user experience designers looking at. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we're looking at as Moonbed. We're transitioning to a more Web3 style with MetaMask integrations, and it's definitely something we are a bit uh, worried about because in traditional iGaming, if for, say, uh, some funds come in from a player at a deposit and they get lost somewhere, you can go to their bank, you can go to their credit card company, and you can figure out what happened. Uh, however, in the world of Web3 or even just crypto in general, they could be lost forever, so it's definitely something to consider. Uh, another potential element that plays into the factor of NFTs and iGaming is for affiliates, affiliate marketers, influencers, things of that nature. Um, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with the fact that there are many influencers, streamers um, that make the billion dollar industry, which is iGaming affiliate marketing. Um, and there are a lot of claims of things like being fake, um, having bet slips that aren't real, having um, you know, streams that aren't accurate or not showing real money that's actually been won in the, in the uh, crypto casino. So just wondering what your thoughts are on um, affiliates being able to leverage the NFT technology to actually show their followers whether they're selling picks or something of that nature that I have in fact made these bets, they're verified through the operator and you can in fact trust me that I'm also not just selling you bets that I wouldn't make myself. Yeah, I think you kind of answered the question in asking it. Um, the influencer kind of landscape around gaming is is pretty, um, you know, it, it lacks a lot of transparency. 
um, exactly what you mentioned. I oftentimes see, even on my own social feed, people post about these up and coming casinos or new projects or sports bets. Um, you know, who knows what's actually happening behind the scenes if they're receiving payouts, if they're making those bets. With the blockchain, all of that is transparent. You get to see the account, you see the leaderboard, you see the payouts transparently. Um, you know, of course, on the back end, there can always be room for, um, you know, bad actors to like, you know, spoof and fake. Uh, but this definitely makes it a lot more difficult and enhances the transparency significantly. So I think that influencers in general would be, um, you know, are, are going to have to really believe in a product or uh, put their money where their mouth is, so to speak, which is important because it shows transparency. I think that the, the false marketing is, it, it allows new entrants to come into the space, but it leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth. When you see a game and you see someone winning, you think it's easy. To me, it's just, you know, it's it's... It's like black hat marketing, so to speak. Um, I, I, I don't think it's a great tactic, and I think it should be eliminated as much as possible. So it's fantastic to see transparency overall in every sector, but gaming specifically. That's a very good point. I mean, knowing myself as an operator, uh, sometimes we reach out to streamers and say, hey, would you like to stream for us? And the first thing they say is, uh, is it live? X, yeah. X or not company will give me, you know, $5,000 in my account per day and things like that. And we say, well, I mean, you know, we don't want to trick anybody. And also it's a little bit dangerous for problem gambling because uh, people who might be watching it, especially the younger generation, may not understand that these people are not playing with their own money. And if they lose the money, um, you know, it's not actually theirs. They don't have to pay it back. And there's some very high profile people, uh, as we all know, being in Toronto here, that are potentially, you know, doing things that um, promoting gambling and just to have NFTs to prove that everything is completely fair and everything is on a straight, straight edge. Um, I think it would be very good. Yeah, and, and it was a small niche I touched on earlier, but the, uh, the lottery systems in general, um, because you mentioned influencers, I thought of a lot of the giveaways that occur on social media. So businesses, this is kind of a niche use case, but businesses as a whole leverage giveaways, whether it's conference tickets or money or a car or, you know, uh, followings on social media or influencer meetups um, as a huge tool for marketing. And typically a lot of people are like, you know, they're weary to enter these types of giveaways because there is a lack of transparency. How do you know they're not giving it to a friend? Or how do you know the gift basket that you are promised is actually real? Um, similarly, integrations into, like I think a great use case for a business would be to do social giveaways uh, that can scramble the data. It's all on the blockchain. You enter all the information. You know, it's done one time. Um, that, that's something I'd love to see and it's a great business op. And, and I think that's something that's also going on with the music industry as well. Um, you have the way that the artists get paid in the music industry is that whatever money a platform makes, that, that money gets split between artists based on the amount of streams that they have. But when you have big artists that have fake streams and, and the amount of fake streams is actually so big, they're actually stealing, mo stealing money from other artists that they're actually hardworking and, and they're act are actually you know, uh, reaching real people. So it's, it's definitely something that, that revolves about transparency and it's something that, that eventually is gonna get adop uh, adopted by everyone. No, definitely. NFTs are all about the true ownership of whatever digital asset it is or any asset in general. So um, that's definitely great, especially in the music industry as well. Um, so maybe we can finish off talking about betting with actual NFTs. Um, going back to the days of where there was a poker game and somebody was out of money and they throw their car keys down on the table. Uh, I think a lot of people today might actually be willing to bet, you know, go head to head in the game of poker over a um, board ape club or, or a, a crypto punk or something like that, some of the high rollers. Um, so I guess, Greg, going back to that, how do you think that plays into um, both from a regulatory perspective and also just from a player perspective as somebody who's in the world of crypto, do you see that the future of basically replacing either fiat currency or um, just supplementing it with um, cryptocurrency and NFTs as a medium of gaming um, could be something that's beneficial to users in a, a variety of ways? Um, I, I think that could definitely be something that comes into play. Um, I think it probably already has and we just or I, I haven't heard of, of it happening, but I'm sure uh, if, if there's something that can be bet with or gambled on, people are betting with and gambling on it. Um, so I think having that brought into trustworthy frameworks is uh, probably good for the industry and good for players. 
Yeah, I, uh, I, I tend to agree. I think that's an awesome point you raised. The ability to have not just your, your physical, and your, your specific digital NFTs, so being able to bet with your board ape, and it, I think it actually applies to esports. There was lots of cheering over there from an esports tournament. Um, you know, being able to put forward collateral in different forms. Uh, when the markets are more sophisticated and the financial services arise, something we're looking at as a business is how do we offer, um, you know, how do we collateralize these NFTs and loan against them? We're doing it right now with top 50 digital assets for our institutional clients, but being able to put up a board ape immediately at 25 to 50 percent of its LTV, get that fiat, get that crypto value immediately um, that you can place in gaming allows you a lot of flexibility in the moment. Uh, but even separate to that and further, you can actually in the future will theoretically be able to have your car keys or your car deed or your house deed as an NFT. And you can also put that up in the same way, not just from a collateral perspective, but actually physically bet it and someone could get the full ownership. Um, you know, you're only as good as your word. You take your keys back at the game. Who's going to stop you? Um, same thing. Transparency, blockchain, uh, the technology is going to really open up the doors and the applications for what is and is not, uh, you know, gambling and what we know it today as. Definitely, definitely. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, Jake Paul bets an NFT crypto punk on his next fight or something like that. Probably going to happen at some point. Um, so we're wrapping up. Uh, we're near the end of our time, but I just want to throw it around to see if there's anybody who wants to add anything specific or if we just want to wrap it up. How about yourself? No. Tell us more about Moonbet. You've been asking some great questions. All right, thank you. Well, um, so like I said, Moonbet is a, um, a community-owned sportsbook and casino. It's been running for about a year, the project. Uh, we're currently um, down at the moment for the month of June as we ramp, revamp and come out with our sort of Web3 product. So we're going to have MetaMask and Wallet Connect integrations, allowing players to seamlessly um, pay with cryptocurrency, to bet with cryptocurrency. We're going to have thousands of games from the biggest uh, providers in the world, many of which, which are here today. Um, sportsbook, esports betting, live streaming in the esports betting. And uh, we will be integrating with some partners of NFTs, actually. We found some interesting projects which have basically done what we were saying in terms of um, VIP style um, NFT collections where the players can get sort of a benefit, whether it's lower odds, access to exclusive games and things of that nature by holding an NFT. Um, so for us, the NFTs and iGaming go beyond just being able to bet with them or the ownership of the casino, but actually allowing players to um, have a reason to come to us and also cross community marketing. So we're able to um, partner up with these projects that have created like an NFT community based around betting and casinos and allowing their players to come um, to us and you know receive some sort of player benefits just by holding the NFT. So we're really excited for the relaunch. Uh, it's moonbet.io. There's nothing there at the moment, but it will be coming out uh, in the next couple of weeks in July. All right, if uh, anything, any of you guys want to wrap anything up? If you oh, want to say something about NFTs in the music industry, Castillo, today, here's your moment. Uh, no, nah, I, uh, I think I've said it all. Um, definitely there's, there's, some, there's so many problems uh, in the Web3 music uh, industry right now, and, and we're definitely trying to solve those, those problems with, with NFTs. I think we can solve them. Perfect. Well, thank you all very much. Hope everybody had a great day at Sigma. I guess this concludes the first day. So we'll give the AV team some well-needed rest so they can be back tomorrow. Uh, thanks to all their great work. Thanks to everybody who made this possible. And uh, see you all tomorrow.